Well, I'm out in the yard with a sawzall. That means I'm about to fuck shit up. Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, The Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with the go-kart. This is a Coleman KT196, and I'm just entirely too big to get into it, so we're gonna do a little bit of modifications to this thing today. If you're curious of its history, it actually goes back to before Christmas. My neighbor ended up with two. She needed one fixed, didn't have the money for it, didn't want both go-karts, so she said, and I agreed to, if I get the second go-kart after I get the first one taken care of running driving for her, and that's been working out great so far. They've really enjoyed that thing over the last few weeks. But for me, well, it's so hard for me to get in and out of. I figured it's time for me to go ahead and start making some modifications to this thing. And it'll keep me busy in the time before Eleanor comes home. Now, if you watch my other channel, VV the Duck VV, you'll notice that parts of Eleanor have started arriving home already. That's right. And in the next coming weeks, hopefully, if all goes as planned, <laughs> Eleanor will be here too. But in the meanwhile, I need something to keep me busy. And that's what we're going to start working on here. So before we even start playing with the, the running gear on it and getting the engine going, I think what we should do is, is start cutting up the chassis and making sure that it fits me. Because whatever I end up doing to it anyway is going to be all custom. So let's start with modifying the frame in the chassis to make it normal human size. Because currently, this thing is set up for either a couple of children or some really, really small dwarves or something. And uh, it's just not going to work for me. <laughs> So like you like, comment, subscribe, don't forget to pluck that dingle blaze to get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. And as always, if you'd like to email me, DuckmanCycles at DuckShit.net or hit up DuckShit.net and use the email link and type out your message there. Thanks for watching. We'll be back after the intro. All right, before we do anything, I think we should get this seat up and out of the way. Looks like it comes out by first removing. Well, you know what? We're gonna need some more tools. I thought these things were threaded into themselves. That one was one of the seat bolts. And it looks like the seat belt itself is also attached in here, and it's some kind of a cargo net bullshit on the back that also needs to go. I guess we'll cut that off of there. No reason for it to stay. By the way, it was in some bad shape anyway, there's no reason to keep that. Throw that in the trash can. All right, the thing already looks a lot better. didn't occur to me that it's actually a seat adjustment over here but it's at the maximum at the maximum yeah it doesn't go back any further so that's it good that's about out now I can take off the bottom parts of the seat belt and get this whole seat out of the way It's actually got a VIN number under here, I don't believe it. <laughs> wow, it shows its age too. It's older than I thought it was. This actually has a nice frame to it might shrink the seat up and make a proper seat instead of a double seat. Alright, let's see what we got in here. Wow, look at how much room they made already. That's a heck of a change. Alright, you can see where the seat belt bolted in here, down below. 
and this is where the seat itself bolted into and this is slotted so this is the adjuster of course you got a plane flying over as always <laughs> but that freed up an enormous amount of space in here all right when we lengthen this frame i think what we're going to do is we're going to cut it here and we're going to raise the cage up and then i'll probably cut it somewhere around in here and i'm sure the angles aren't going to jive but this is tubes and tubes are pretty easy to bend so i'll just leverage them however necessary and make that work uh, down below on the bottom however there's a tube here there's a tube here and it's the same on the other side so we'll cut through up here and yeah i know they're not exactly parallel to each other but that's not going to matter so that just means the one that's on an angle needs to be slightly longer to make up for the difference so that's not too big of a deal and then uh when we get that put back together that's when we'll drop the cage on there and figure out how that's going to work but let's clean this thing out because there is just a pile of shit in there completely unnecessary i see where the wiring is looks like it went through the little tunnel here in the center so of course i'll have to disconnect the wiring before we start sawing anything and uh that plate steel that you see in there is gonna need to be moved because it looks like it's uh yeah it's welded into the tube so i'm gonna have to cut it probably from the back up to wherever my cut line is because i want the whole floor to go forwards underneath the seat where the seat's going to be really doesn't need to be a floor so that's not absolutely necessary i mean i could always just weld in some sheet metal or something anyway that's not really too big of a deal but uh yeah we do need to sheet metal to move forwards because it would be nice to not disrupt the uh pattern that's on it because if i cut it and space it or any of that stuff it's going to disrupt how it looks yeah so we'll cut it cut it along from the corner to wherever my cut mark is going to be which probably i should make it around here to make the cuts minimum and then i'll just weld it all back together wherever it sits so that should work out fine and then the best part is these brackets that are here are still going to be usable for whatever type of seat that i decide to put in here now i'll probably wind up putting in a proper adult sized single seat and make that work and then because i've lengthened it i may have to lengthen the uh steering shaft a little bit i'd also like to center it for whatever it's worth so i may wind up either moving the uh, rack and pinion over replacing the rack and pinion or perhaps using a couple of universal joints to get it to where it needs to be i also don't like the pedals in here so it may change that also uh, we'll, we'll come up with something for that but anyway we're at a pretty good point right now so let's unbolt the top of this frame and just get it out of the way completely That don't weigh anything. All right. Now we got the chassis quite exposed here. Ew. I hear sloshing in the gas tank. Oh no. And it don't smell like gas. Okay, well, we're gonna have to address that very soon before the tank gets ruined. Probably not in this video. But we will have to address it for sure. All right, got the old whiskey broom. Not something I talk about much on my YouTube channel, but once in a while people do ask, hey Duckman, why do you call it a whiskey broom? Well, technically it's a whisk broom, but it looks like a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> this is just uh, yard debris leaves and shit. There's no reason for me to collect it and put it in the trash. It's just dirt and leaves.
think we're gonna cut it right about here. And this tape will make a nice straight edge to cut on. No particular reason why I chose that spot versus a few inches one way or the other. That'll work. And now I'm looking at this rear panel. It's kind of hard to get a saw in here, but I'm feeling the bottom. And I think I can get in just fine from the bottom, so I might be flipping this thing over. I hope that uh, engine doesn't um, drain oil all over the damn place. <laughs> Maybe I should just pull the engine off. It looks like it's not that hard. There it is. There it is. Here we go. Jeez, it doesn't weigh anything anymore. After looking at these welds more closely, I realized there's one here, one here, one over here, one here I've already cut through, and then the three that are down the back, one in each corner, but then there's a bead running all the way along here. <laughs> so I would say that uh, whoever the welder was that day, it was about his lunch break and uh, he left before he was truly finished. Well, anyway, it's going to be a lot more cutting down here than up here. I mean, that I cut the weld and it went right through, so it wasn't a big deal at all. But still, yeah, I need to cut up to about here. So knowing that, it's going to be a little harder down at the bottom. What I'll probably do is I'll use the angle grinder then just to cut a slot, and then I'll run the saws all right along. It'll be nice, fast, cheap, and easy. bottom will make us another mark.
hell's going on? I should have let go. <laughs> there it is. Oh, Duck Man, you ruined it. It was a good go kart, now it's a piece of crap. Look what you did. You should be ashamed of yourself. Oh man. Ruin that poor defenseless go kart. Just getting a look at it as it sits. Of course, it's not all put together yet, but it's roughly six inches longer. It looks longer than that, but everything just currently turned out of the way, which causes the distance to increase. And there'll be a hollow void underneath the back seat. Well, the only seat, as I had mentioned before. But uh, this should work. I'm just going to get a couple of pieces of uh, pipe and just slide it inside of these things and see if I can prop it up to give you an idea as to what it's going to look like. Alright, there we are. Of course, it's sagging a little bit in the middle, and these two pieces here, which are at an angle anyway, are going to be a little goofy, so I'll just bend them and get them straight, so that's not a big deal to a guy like me. But, uh, yeah, it's starting to take shape already, and they haven't even welded on it. <laughs> I think what I'll do is I'll stack some wood underneath this here, drop that seat back into place, and just sit in it, and just see what it feels like. And make sure it works for me before I commit to anything else beyond this. So once I start welding in, it's a real pain in the ass to cut it all back out, and I really don't want to do that. Oh. Check it out. It's telescopic. <laughs> oh, some lazy ass hitting the horn instead of ringing the doorbell. Fucker. Here goes. <laughs> Climb up on here and see what kind of disaster we got. How did Duckman screw this one up? What are you doing, Boomer? I see you over there, being sneaky. All right, here we go. Be delicate because this stuff is just stacked up here. Oh, that's much better. That's actually about eight inches. And I don't mean a bedroom eight inches, I mean a real eight inches. <laughs> Pedals are good. Steering wheel needs to come back. That's for sure. Now my legs are unusually short for somebody of my size, so this would actually still be good for most adults, but steering wheel does need to come back because I want to sit in a more relaxed position. So the steering wheel needs to be here. Yeah, this looks like it's going to work out. Okay, so we're going for eight inches. We're not going for six. This is uh, this is good. This is good. It's going to work. Now, I would imagine that whatever seat I'm going to put in here is probably going to be bigger and thicker than this, too. So it might actually push me forwards a little more. So I might even want to go a little longer than this. Let's see. How long is that? about nine. Nine inches. I think that might work because as I said this seat is probably going to be bigger that I put in here than this one and it's going to push me forwards a little bit. All right let's try putting in a buggy seat and just see what happens. Pull this out of here. Let's put this in. Yeah it's going to change the seating position dramatically. It's going to have to be up higher than that too. It's currently sinking into the uh, floor which is dented. 
not dented, I should say, uh, flex down a little bit. I'm gonna prop up the bottom of that floor before I sit in it. Alright. Actually, this could work. Could work. Legs are a little cramped, but I, mean, I guess I could extend it a little bit more. Maybe get another inch out of it. Uh oh, the pipe came out. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see how far back are we. That's ten and a quarter. That's ten and a half. We'll square it up, of course, before we weld it, but this actually might be where I want to sit. I kind of like this. This is good. Yeah, I like this. Okay, well, what we're going to start doing then is we're going to start cutting pieces to weld in here. It just occurred to me that this tube is actually smaller than this tube under here. I have plenty of this, but I don't know if I have any of that. So I'm going to have to have a look around and see what we got around here. go that should work out and you see the difference in those two bars there I'll bend that one up a little bit bend that one down a lot of bit I might even just kink one in the middle and just bend that one down so it comes sloping down that way lots I can play with there but it's looking pretty good but I need some donor metal for the top what do I have that strong metal this nice old hand truck just happens to be some nice strong steel and ought to have the same thickness. So should be okay, because these things are known for being strong. All right, well, I guess I need to cut up a couple pieces for that next. I'm not gonna start tacking anything together because I need to put all four pieces together simultaneously. And I'll use some angle iron to hold everything together nice and straight. It's one of those tricks for welding a tube straight. You just use some angle iron. So that's what we're gonna do on here. Well, let me cut this thing up make a couple pieces and see what turns up. Anyway, I had a minute or so off camera and I just cut a bunch of pipes. And I just cut everything to about uh, 10 and a half inches. This piece here, I ended up with just a piece of scrap that just about fits. Looks like it's maybe a quarter of an inch short, but I got a feeling that if I pull everything together or bend these arms into the correct location, I, I think they'll uh, align properly and I will be able to weld them together. But uh, I'm gonna play with that a little bit. I'm gonna have to stop the store and get some angle iron. This is what we're gonna do is we're gonna clamp all these on just like this and that'll get everything nice and straight. And I'll clamp all four of them just the same so that way they're all nice and square. And then before I do anything else, I mean it's a go-kart, I probably really don't have to, but I'll measure diagonally across it. I'll pick a suspension component and then back to the suspension component here and crisscross that way. And they should be pretty close, should be pretty close. If it's off something goofy like an inch or you know, even a half an inch, then I might have to play with it. But again, it's a go-kart, it's not a real car. <laughs> but uh, 
I think this is coming together. It looks pretty good. I'm gonna sit in it one more time just to see what it's like. I, I think it'll it'll work out pretty good for me, but uh, there's the seat. We'll throw that up in there and we'll see what turns up. Yeah. This goes in here. Right now I have nothing supporting that seat. Quick. Put something under there. These four by fours should suffice. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Good times. Ah. Oh, this is great. This is really good. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I definitely need to um, spread the pedals out. I'm going to put a pedal way over here. I don't like my feet over to one side. I'm gonna move the steering column closer to the middle because my foot's hitting it. I plan on putting a manual clutch into this thing and a manual clutch engine is gonna require a clutch pedal. And if my foot is hitting the steering column, it's gonna frustrate the crap out of me. So it'll have gas and brake. I don't really like these pedals, but now that I'm hitting them from a different angle, a little more comfortable than they used to be. I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that, but this is great. I'll move the steering wheel to about here. I might even put a bigger steering wheel in here. Because this little steering wheel is... It's jerk. Make poopy. Well, before we ran into the technical problems of the battery dying, I believe I was discussing the steering wheel. And uh, I thought about putting a bigger one in. Because the short throw that's on the steering wheel makes the uh, front end kind of twitchy. And a bigger steering wheel would slow down the steering a little bit, whatever it's worth. And for a bigger man grip, a little better for me, so that's what I was thinking. Well, you have a look around, getting a little wet out here. That's right, it's starting to rain. So that means I gotta put a pause for the cause and I'm gonna have to end this video. So like, you like, you comment, subscribe, don't forget to plug that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DuckShit.net for all my different social media links. And if you'd like to email me, send one to DuckmanCycles at DuckShit.net or hit up DuckShit.net and use the contact page link that you see up there and you can type your message in there just the same. So many people tell me they don't know how to get in contact with me. I couldn't possibly be easier to reach. Everything is up there. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hopefully we'll be back next time around getting this thing welded together and then we'll start looking at the roll cage. Thanks for watching. See you next time.